All right, let's talk about Lando and Drupal 7. This pair goes great together. Uh, here's over on the right, some things we'll talk about in this video. Uh, some documentation for Lando, docs.devildando.io, docs for Drupal, which are helpful when you're developing a Drupal application. And then we'll qu quickly uh, spin up a Drupal app, Drupal 7, and the steps to do that are Lando init, Lando start, and then we'll need to get a Drupal code base. And then we can actually use Drush to get that code base. So we'll do Lando Drush DL, and that will get us the code base. And that should be the stuff that you need to get you going quickly for a Drupal 7 application. All right, let's take a look at those docs. So over here we have docs.devildando.io, and if you don't have Lando, head over to the installing section, and it will tell you how to grab Lando for your operating system. And here are the document. Here's the documentation for Drupal 7. And of course, there's lots of other documentation here if you want to do things like work with multiple databases, uh, add in different services, lots of things like that. And then the Drupal documentation is api.drupal.org, and you'll want to click on the Drupal 7.x if you're working on Drupal 7. And of course, if you're working on Drupal 8 click on one of the versions of Drupal 8 over here. All right, great, let's get a Drupal app going. See what it takes to do that. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is uh, if you just run the Lando command, uh, you'll see uh, what kinds of things are available to you and what we're going to use right now is the init command to initialize a Lando app following the same pattern as like git init or composer init. So Lando init and that's going to ask you some uh, questions about the app that you want to start. So we have different start states which we call recipes and we're going to start with Drupal 7 today. So select Drupal 7. The web root is relative to where you're issuing this command and we're just going to serve right out of here. In certain circumstances you might want to serve out of a subdirectory like public or web or whatever you want, however you want to set up your app is perfectly fine. We have to name this app, so let's call this Lando e Drupal Siete. So that's the name. Great, the app's initialized. and. All that that does is create a .lando.yaml configuration file, which you can spin up by hand if you want, but the lando init command is a convenient way to get that going. So what the lando.yaml file does is just store the answers to that question, and of course we can add other things to that if we like. Um, so right now we have a name of the application, the recipe starting state, which is Drupal 7, and where we're going to serve the application from. So for example, you could put via in here and do nginx. By default, it will uh, use Apache. So, But there's lots of possibilities that you can put in here to configure your .lando.yaml file. And you can read about lots of those things on the documentation here. All right, so we'll save that. Let's just keep nginx just for ha-has. And the next thing that we want to do is start this up. And that's going to get us uh, access to some tooling that Lando knows we need, or uh, makes a good assumption that we'll need. Uh, when we're using a Drupal app, which is in this case namely Drush. So we'll do Lando start, and as that goes by, you'll see what it's doing is Lando is based on top of Docker Compose, so it's spinning up all the containers that we need to develop our application, which is great because the application is going to be isolated from our local operating system. So, one way to think about Lando is a dev dependency manager. So, it's going to have all the things that we need to develop a PHP application or a Drupal application or whatever kind of application we're working on, isolated uh, from the operating system and from the other applications that you're working on. So uh, if one application requires PHP 5.4 and one requires PHP 7.2, no problem. They're just in different containers and everything's good. So it's spinning up the containers here. Now it's getting Drush, <coughs> which is good because we're going to use Drush in a second. Okay, great. So now the app is up and ready to go. We got our Docker containers. The URLs have come up red here, and that's because uh, we don't have a Drupal code base. So let's remedy that now. Let's get a Drupal code base. So just like we did before, if you type just Lando, you see what's available to you. But now that we have a Drupal 7 app running, actually started, we have addi additional things that are available. We saw init before, but now we have a MySQL command. We have access to PHP. We have access to Composer and we have access to Drush, which is what we're going to use right now to download a Drupal code base. 
So I'm going to preface that with Lando because that's going to run Drush from inside the container completely isolated from our operating system. So Drush DL Drupal 7. And that's going to grab a Drupal 7 code base for us. That's fantastic. When that's done, I'll refresh this file tree over here so you can see that it's gotten that for us. So there we go, Drupal 7.59. Refresh this file tree. There you go. So it dumps it into a Drupal 7.7-59 directory. But we said we want to serve from here. So let's just move those files out to this directory. So move all the things from Drupal 7.59 to this location. And let's get the dot files to so star dot to this location. Now if we refresh this file tree, you can see that all of our Drupal files are here. Fantastic. And this Drupal 7.59, oop, why didn't we get those files? There we go. So now we got all of our files in this root directory of our application. So we don't need that Drupal uh, 759 directory anymore. It's just empty. Get rid of that. Great. So now we have a Drupal code base. We can go ahead and install Drupal. So one command that's really helpful is the lando info command. And that uh, will tell us in information about our application. And so one thing that we saw when the app first started was those handy URLs. Uh, but since we issued some more commands, uh, you could maybe scroll back to them if they're still in your buffer, but um, you can get them anytime using Lando info. So I'm going to use the HTTPS URL. You can use any one of these URLs, but I always use HTTPS to be parity with production. So if we pop that in there, the HTTPS is a self-signed cert, so we have to tell our browser to trust that. Uh, and then we can head over to the application and we can install Drupal. So I'm just going to do a default install. I'm going to use English. And now for a Drupal 7 app, the name of the database is Drupal 7. The database username is Drupal 7. And the password is Drupal 7. And we have to open up this advanced field set option. And the database host, instead of being localhost, is going to be database. Because the database is in a different container than the app server. So open up that advanced options and change your database host to database when you're using Lando. Great, so now we have Drupal installing, uh, that install, and then we're pretty much ready to go and start developing an application. You can use Drush like you normally would, you can you know, download Path Auto, you know, Lando Drush DL Path Auto, um, do things quite easily with Lando and then uh, just follow your normal development patterns and uh, enjoy your development workflows. I hope that's helpful to you. Um, great, have a good day and if you have any questions ask, hit us up in Slack.